Yes, sir. Um, something that we want to talk about is having your opening strategies and ideas. So the moment you play certain openings, you find that they always have a thematic approach of things. By thematic, I'm saying like, usually even regardless the moves that another party plays, this is what white will play or what black can play. Uh, for example, when we get to openings like um, the London system, this is a typical way the London system gets to happen. You find that whether, even when you try to fianchetto, they will play pawn to e3, when you play this, they will play the pawn to c. So you find that this structure is always thematic. It's always there. Hmm? Regardless what you play, this is what they will always play. Yeah, it they might now start changing maybe a few plans that are set after this they may play a move like this. And you you figure out that what they have kept constant is this kind of structure. So whether putting the bishop here or here, it makes a big difference, obviously, in the game setup, but the main idea was kept. The main idea of the opening was kept. So that's the whole point of having things which are thematic. So we look at the fianchetto. Let's say that you also play such a move, you'll find that they'll still play this. Uh, if you play such a move, they might now play bishop to g3. And if you develop your knight, they'll still play c3. So you find, yeah, they, they stuck to their idea, regardless what you're doing. So the same thing with uh, uh, an opening I've been adapting to, which is the Ponciani. After the move knight to f6, pawn c3. Yes, so I've found very many interesting moves to be played here. Uh, so if they play knight to f6, you still play d4. And whether knight takes e4 or d takes c, the, you're going to chase one of those knights. Yes. So if they take if they take this pawn, you're going to chase away the other knight. They play, so they, they're forced to play move like knight e7, then knight takes pawn. But uh, if we looked at another move that black tends to play at is f5, d4 is still played. But after f takes d, knight takes e5. So your whole essence was to play d4 right from the start. So regardless what they are playing, d4 is the move that you're going to be playing. So it's necessary to have that in mind that if you're playing things which are thematic, you will still continue with the things that you want to play. Yeah. So even when they play f6, you still play d4. If they play uh, d6, you still play d4. So d4 is just a move to be played in this position. It asks itself to be played. I think if you don't play it, it will just play itself. So it would be weird if you played a move like this. Well, it's not that it's bad, but it's just weird. Because the whole point of playing c three was actually to play d4. Okay, you can also argue that you wanted to bring out your queen, but that's not the primary objective. Yeah, so it only changes after a move like d5 immediately lashing into the center that you play such a move, queen to f4. And then we get to understand that actually pawn to c3 was multi-purpose, but primarily it was to challenge the center. So let's go back. Let, let's look at some of the other moves that have been played in such a position after City. A very weird move is queen to e7. It's hard to meet if I told it's the first time for you to see such a move. Because huh? uh, you'll wonder what the way to go. Uh, we can see games in the database, from the master's database, have actually gone with bishop to b5 and bishop to c4. Uh, bishop to c4. So after bishop to c4, let's see a move that is possible. Let's take d6. 
castles and well they would want to challenge the bishop here they want to challenge the bishop here that is because uh, you would not want that bishop to keep staring at you for long then two the white plan is actually to also go for their d4 push immediately so that keeps in the hang let's say you play a move like knight to, knight to f here you still play d4 if they take rook to e1 they can't play this they can't play this because it will still be chopped off and it doesn't make sense why they played such a move so they will be forced to uh obviously this loses a piece let's say they want to hang onto their piece you just spell pressure onto that and for as long as they are there in the center the key the queen is going to be a target in such a position so if they can't hold on to that piece for long so let's say they play in, uh f3 immediately you still challenge the piece in the center if they move it back pin the other knight well you don't just break the pin lazily like that because even after taking it you're going to force open the, the center. And you can see the best move is actually to ignore everything that is happening. Oh, okay, that's a very cool move. <laughs> yeah, so that's the whole thing about themes in openings. Yeah, themes basically happen when the idea can't really be altered by much of the play from the other side. Uh, another move that I would always find weird actually in the Ponzian is a point F. Yeah, so we still continue with D4. Well, much as the engine would always say take, but then uh, black is going to have a certain kind of play similar to that of the Queen's Gambit. Uh, sorry, King's Gambit fashion. So whereby they have sacrificed the pawn in the opening, but then they have a lot of play. And it's really going to be disgusting for, for white because you will need to firstly be so accurate in your defense. And two, it's not really a, a fun one to play. Yeah, so obviously now you're attacking the if a pawn, if they push it, you can still land your knight there, which gives you advantage. Yeah, so after take, then take, take with check, you, you can win yourself a rook. But then even after the rook exchange, it's not funny that uh, your next exchange, ah, you still have no development advantage. So you can still get out their pieces and there's a lot to fight for. There's a lot to fight for, yeah. Though it's it's easier to to play it when when you when you actually have all the pieces settled. When there's not much to attack, so I recommend even after F, you play D4. So that if they take here with this, you just take back, and all their players is they just have a weaker king and. It's not clear what they are doing actually. Yeah, so that's a way to go pertaining thematic openings. Let's go back. Then what if a person plays, uh, yeah, another system opening like the knight of three. So usually, knight of six. So usually after this, they have to land the knight there. I love a very fun move because I am quite prepared for it and it has a few tricks behind its sleeves. And that is the move knight to c6. It immediately actually takes away most of the plans that black tends to have after this, then that, then that, then you push D, then they start poking like holes into your center one by one. So it's it's good when actually you're always taking the the your opponent out of prep. That's basically, they call it the two points attack, something like that, because uh, 
it's typical of this. Then after that, you play knight to f3, defending the pawn. So that if they take, you can actually take back with the knight or bishop, then bishop to g4. So the moment you actually play a move like knight to c knight to c3, all the ideas stop. It's like they are put on a hold. You haven't chased away the knight, you haven't done anything. So they can't play this because they're hanging a knight. So if they take back, you can even land your knight here and if they play these, uh certainly doubling those pawns is good. I think you play d4, having a very strong pawn in the center. So if they try to neutralize their pawn with that, you can just hang on to that pawn. I think it is saying from Alekhine that uh, a pawn on e4 means the game is actually down for, for the for black. The moment you have a pawn established on e4, it's already an attack because it has taken a lot of space on the king side. Yeah. So that's the whole thing of systems. But then uh, as the white side in such a case, you should also be ready for for close to everything. You know, it's good when tables are flipping on your side. For example, I love playing the, the, the Dutch defense almost against everything. Whether you play one F4, one F4, like regardless what you almost play, apart from E4, I love playing the Dutch as a counter to it. And, and yet, there are so many things that happen around it, the first one you just play H4 and then you're like, what, what is this happening? What's happening right now? So if you play like such a move and you're already out of, <laughs> you you really find it hard to even continue. Yeah, so if this makes it normal, but if they continue like with H6, you have to figure out what to do. You really have to figure out what to do. So they already want to establish this stone point so if you block it that way, I think it's a move, but uh, you can see that it's really getting unpleasant and it's not clear what they were trying to do, but it's obvious that you are, you're not prepared for it. Yeah. So usually when your opponent attacks on the flanks, you ought to control the center. I'm sure a move that you should be considered, okay, there's E6 and then after this, you can play this. Or you just leave them and then you play C5. You have to you have to also counter in the center. It's it's a must for you to counter in the center when you're being attacked from the flanks. Otherwise, you're going to you're not going to have sufficient counterplay on both sides of the board, and in a few it will be game down. Yeah, so uh You can never out prepare your opponent. It's it's unlikely that in uh, in thirty games you'll always have them very perfect with preparation. Seeing that chess also has so many probabilities. So after the move like one e four, and then you play. Uh, let's say a person plays with the Sicilian. There. Yeah. I don't even know how many variations of the Sicilian that are possible. But even after the move knight f3, okay, let's say that you are the one who has prepared your system with bishop here. They can play this, they can, they can play this, they can play this, they can play this, they can play this, can play this. then and, and all these are are known systems. They, they're all known systems. And if you never prepared for such a system, then you'll find that yes, as much as you keep up with your plan that I'm going to do this and that, I'm going to develop my bishop. It's there's already an element of surprise to it because you might have not prepared for B for B six. So you have to also get to rely on intuition at the end of it you really have to perfect your play and yeah it it reaches a point when 
that has to count too. So you must improve in your chess, not just from the place of preparation, but also intuition. Knowing that, okay, if my idea of the opening is to control, let's say, d5, then let me stick to it, regardless of the things that they play. So if they play maybe a move like e4, then you're like, okay, um, it's now different. But since, since they're adding a defense on 2d5 and they play such a move, well, it's funny, but you, you must stick to idea regardless what happens in a game, yeah. So that's basically it on your opening idea. Yeah, try to look to it that actually you get sufficient play in your opening. See to it that you also improve on the different things that you have in your opening. Change your ideas. If at all, um, the way we're looking at e4, e5, knight here and knight c6 and c3. So try to change your ideas. If at all they play such a move, don't totally be blacked out. Stick to it and, and see that, yeah, you can, you can still do something. So obviously D4 is the move to go. And maybe if they play D6 now, you, you should have it figured out. Because you know, that, okay, these are typical Ponziani moves. But... What has changed right now is, is this. So should I continue with my thematic approach or should I change something? So if you're to change something, then what are you changing to exactly? Yeah, so let's say they attack a bishop. And yeah, you play bishop takes g8, rook takes, and queen to f4 check, attacking the knight. So if they defend the knight that way, you play b4. If they play this, then they are losing a knight. And yeah, it's, it's, it's certain that you were more ready for this. So much as they tried to surprise you, you have got a way of countering it. So if they play maybe bishop g4, which is a very common move in the position, queen to b3, attacking the knight twice. If they play knight to f5, you can even throw in this check. I, I love that check. Two is also this other check which forces them to literally go back. And after d5, they're losing a piece. So they didn't look at the surprise well. Yeah, so always try to also figure out the different positions that you are not certain of. Much as there might be moves which are common, that is d5, d6, f5, and knight to f6. Try to also see the possibilities of the moves which are not common. Moves like this, they, they may not be the best, but they are they are they are certainly a surprise for one who is not ready for them. Yeah, so keep looking out for those ideas and, and try to see does do my does my prep still count? So if it does count, then what do I do about it? So after this, then you find you have to play a move like bishop d3. Me, I love playing the knight. Uh, the, I, I push the pawn forward. And then I play queen to c2 or queen to b3. In this position, queen to c2 or queen to b3. Well, uh, well, the, I don't really see that much of a difference, but I feel they're equally good. Yeah, so don't only look at the main variation the main lines, try to also check out the sidelines because it's from those that actually you get to perfect your, your intuition and well play. So at, you are not caught off guard if they, maybe Fianchetto, you still play D4, yes, after playing D4 and they play maybe a knight, uh, this then D5. So if already the original ideas of the opening were to play D4 and if nothing happens in the center, I still advance then stick to that and see to it that you actually continue executing it. Yeah, so should you play C4? Should you damage the pawn structure? You know, D6 is also a move. I, I don't think it's the best, but it's good enough. And uh, one, for, for starters, it actually starts blunting this bishop. This bishop would want to come out like this, not from this side of the board. So if you play a move like D6, it, it looks funny, but 
it actually has good ideas behind it. So, for example, after this, after, oh yeah, sorry, that's the yeah you take with the queen and it's it's certain that you you have some play. Obviously, these pawns are ready to be picked up. The bishop can't yet play. Uh, yes, they can play d5 immediately, but uh, after bishop to c4, controlling d5, it's it's certain that that's a very, very backward pawn. H3 and black is actually tending to be lost, to being lost in such a position because of very simple opening basics. So after knight to save, uh, F controlling that you can just play knight to b to d2, or you can even put that. I'm thinking of a, an interesting move like this, but then you rather develop this other knight, then castle and bring the rook here, try to move the knight away and start harvesting these isolated points and the backward point. Yeah, so those are all the opening ideas. I hope it's been helpful. Yeah. Understand your thematic openings best. Try to get out all the ideas that are within the opening, both good and bad. Don't just look at the best play that, okay, um, they won't play there, they may play back. Yes, that may be the best move, but also look at even the possible bad moves. Otherwise, they might be in a bad position, but if you can't take advantage of it, then it's never bad. It's easy as being a bad position if, if actually they get a win out of it. Yeah, so that's the whole thing. That's a whole study today. Hope it's been very helpful. And all the best to you. Ciao.